In this tutorial from thefunkyprofessor.com, I'm going to cover the course and the distribution of the median nerve. Now the median nerve is one of the nerves that supplies the upper limb and it comes from the brachial plexus. And there are so many nerves that come from the brachial plexus and I often find it quite confusing to remember what does what. So to help me, I have a couple of memory joggers for each nerve. And for the median nerve, I have two words. I think of the word flex and loaf. That's flex and loaf, and you'll see why shortly. So the median nerve actually has contributions from both the lateral and the medial cord of the brachial plexus. From the lateral cord, it has the nerve root values of C5, C6, and C7. And from the medial cord, it has nerve roots value C8 and T1. So in fact, the median nerve has a contribution from all the nerve root levels. Once it's formed, the medial nerve lies immediately anterior to the axillary artery, but very quickly moves lateral to the axillary artery. As it continues down the arm, the axillary artery turns into the brachial artery. So the median nerve lies initially lateral to the axillary artery and then lateral to the brachial artery. But about halfway down the arm, the median nerve crosses over, so it now lies medial to the brachial artery. Now here's the good bit of news. The median nerve has absolutely no branches whatsoever in the arm. Woohoo! So on its journey down the arm, the median nerve initially lies on top of coracobrachialis and then brachialis muscles. Now, before entering the forearm, all three nerves that enter the forearm do so by passing between two heads of a muscle. The radial nerve passes through the heads of the supinator, the ulnar nerve passes through the heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the median nerve passes through the heads of pronator teres. I like to think of it as a gateway, a welcome to the forearm if you like. It is worth noting that the two nerves that supplies the majority of the muscles in the forearm which is the radial nerve and the median nerve, give off these deep branches. The radial nerve gives off the posterior interosseous branch and the median nerve gives off the anterior interosseous branch. The anterior interosseous branch descends down the forearm lying on top of the interosseous membrane. It supplies the three muscles in the deep compartment, which is to say flexor pollicis longus, pronator quadratus, and the lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus, the tendons of which attach to the index and the middle fingers. The medial half of flexor digitorum profundus is of course supplied by the ulnar nerve. So let's get back to the median nerve. Having gone through the heads of pronator teres, the median nerve does in fact supply the majority of muscles in the superficial compartment as well. So this is pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, palmaris longus. The only one that's missing is flexor carpi ulnaris, which is supplied by the ulnar nerve. The median nerve continues down the forearm, and about five centimeters proximal to the wrist, it gives off a cutaneous branch. And this goes on to supply the skin overlying the thena aspect of the palm. The median nerve itself goes through the carpal tunnel, which is to say it lies underneath the flexor retinaculum at the wrist. It lies between the tendons of flexor carpi radialis and flexor digitorum superficialis. The median nerve then divides into its terminal branches. It has palmar cutaneous branches that supplies the skin of the thumb, the index, the middle, and the lateral half of the ring finger. Now the other terminal branch of the median nerve is the motor branch or the recurrent branch of the median nerve and this supplies the loaf muscles in the hand. Loaf is a mnemonic that's commonly used. The L in loaf stands for the lateral two lumbricals which are the small muscles that arise from the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, the ones in fact that attach to the index and middle fingers. The O is for opponens pollicis, A is for abductor pollicis brevis, and F is for flexor pollicis brevis. So let's summarize. When you think of the median nerve, think of two words. Think of flex because it supplies so many flexors and think of the word loaf because that's the mnemonic that you use for the muscles that it supplies in the hand. So the median nerve, if you remember, arises from all the nerve root levels of the brachial plexus. 
It rises from C5, C6 and C7 via contribution from the lateral cord and it arises from C8 and T1 via a contribution from the medial cord. Immediately upon forming, the median nerve lies anterior to the axillary artery. It quickly shifts over to the lateral part of the axillary artery and then subsequently the brachial artery. About halfway down the arm, it crosses the brachial artery so that it lies medial to the brachial artery as it enters the elbow. The median nerve has no branches whatsoever in the arm. When it enters the forearm, the median nerve passes through the heads of pronated teres. Here it gives off its deep branch, the anterior interosseous branch, which goes down the forearm lying on top of the interosseous membrane, supplying flexor pollicis longus, pronator quadratus, and if you remember, the lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus. If we go back up to the median nerve itself, it supplies the superficial flexors, which include pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus and flexor digitorum superficialis. So the only two flexors that the median nerve does not supply in the forearm are the most medial in the superficial and the deep compartments, which are flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. These are in fact supplied by the ulnar nerve. About five centimeters proximal to the wrist, the median nerve gives off the cutaneous branch which goes on to supply the skin over the thena eminence in the palm. The median nerve enters the hand by passing through the carpal tunnel which means it lies under the fibres of the flexor retinaculum. In the hand the median nerve divides into its terminal branches. It has sensory branches which go on to supply the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger and the lateral half of the ring finger. The motor branch or the recurrent branch of the median nerve supplies the loaf muscles, the lateral two lumbricals, opponens pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, and flexor pollicis brevis. So there you have it, the median nerve. It's a biggie, but it's a goodie, and it gets asked so many times. So just remember, when you think of the median nerve, think flexing and think loaf, and the rest will come clear.